It is the sadhana, the practice of surrender to soul, surrender to love, because the soul in its essence is love. It impulses this system to live in love. So, um, when I softened more and more into the knowing of, of the soul or the truth, I feel more and more that like, the asking is not really necessary because then there's like, I don't know, like a pull or like a movement. Um, yeah, because I, I still have like this resistance of like asking because it, it just brings me into this like, mental confusion again where, where I feel like I need to do something like trying to find something I just want to know if this is like also like a way to it's not also like a way it is the way generally what happens is that you start a practice in order to discipline yourself you say I'm going to ask the question but you have both possibilities always to actually sense it's about sensing it's about feeling that impulse and when you're not really able to feel your soul you can ask the question also so it's a part of that process it's not always that you have to say ask, 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 ask you'll go mad that way it's a sadhana which gives you various possibilities to tune away from the ego and into the truth the main thing though is that you don't empower the ego by saying, I'm not this pain, I'm not that, I'm not that by saying, I'm not that, you're already identifying with it which is why it's an ego exercise to say neti neti, neti neti is an experience, not a sadhana it is not a sadhana, it is an experience along the path of self-realization, the realization arises I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not this but not because you have consciously separated from that as an observer, from all of the suffering but because you've been in so much of a surrender that you understand that you are not the ego it comes as an experience, not as a practice so when you feel the impulse of the soul and you act from it from moment to moment then that is the practice Asking comes to establish that differentiation or the discernment, the Viveka Buddhi use the Viveka Buddhi, the Viveka Shakti, the ability to discern simply to build muscle, you know, it's like you lift up the dumbbell and it gives you some muscle and then contours it after a while but absolutely, when that impulse comes, it doesn't come only because you've asked a question but you ask the question to maintain discipline and you can do that when you feel that you're actually going too much into ego action then you go back and you move into that state of asking it's perfectly all right, the important thing is to know that you are this to know that this is in surrender to that and to live in that state of growing surrender that is the base practice, of course there are many other practices but this is what the, the main thing is and that softness that grows into just being being the it's being the instrument of this master it's not I am it's I am this I'm in surrender and that's what gives the strength finally of being present, being contoured being coherent, being materially coherent being clear in your thinking being master of the emotions and able to actually experience an emotion at will not as a victim of being present here and now and vibrant and growing in your creativity 
being more precise about that that unity consciousness experience where you make a decision i want to experience all of this in unity consciousness and it just happens so this is as the the consciousness expands you're not going to be asking questions from morning to night it's a way of disciplining yourself to come down from your space cadet career and descend into the body into the thisness of the body into presence into here and now throw off your moon suit you know kick off your moon boots and and start to walk that is what is being described here that's the spirituality of the future it is not going to be people asking who am i and things like that that's from the last century the neo advaitin aberrations of advaita vedanta now it's about connecting with the soul and being in surrender and observing only to the point where the discerning between ego and soul happens and going with that truth you are already actually you know oper- operating from it as an impulse that's what's happening to you just are not able to believe that it's real because you've been spacing out for 6 years or 7 years so it's taking you time to realize that you can actually walk without moon boots that you don't need a moon suit to be able to breathe you don't need an inbuilt respirator because you've been spacing out your system is getting used to being in thisness and as you get used to thisness you'll be more and more this you'll be more and more in surrender because you know surrender when i see you here in front of me i know your story but even if i didn't know your story there is surrender in this system it's a growing surrender it's materially i can sense it everyone will feel it in you and the other people know when someone spaced out or when they are here and present and quiet and and in surrender because when you're spaced out you cannot be in surrender when you're separating from the experience when you're disidentifying with the various experiences you can't be in surrender because you are identifying with the with the soul i am and if you are that then what is this you've descended back into yourself one can feel it and it's growing even the look in your eyes are more compassionate how can you be compassionate if you're spaced out you cannot even relate to the person in front of you there are a lot of people walking around here in rishikesh that are so spaced out the sweet people it's not that but how can there be compassion if you are not here how if you're disconnected from the experience and identifying with a supreme soul which is actually not this it's that then how can you be this and identify with the thisness of the other be compassionate to the thisness of the other that's the challenge and you're from what i'm seeing it's quite amazing actually even if you don't feel you know that it takes some years of practice to fully sit in it of seva of being in surrender to the soul of trusting 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 this piercing beyond your abrahamic inheritance of fear and 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 guilt and you know oh i'm i if i actually find the soul within then what happens to god and jesus and all of that stuff and am i being disloyal and all of these things will start to erupt and you have to pierce beyond it and then slowly move inward the soul is not emptiness and silence the soul is fullness and impulse the cosmic soul is experienced as vastness and not as emptiness but 
its vastness. But this is experienced as impulse and fullness. So if you're going with that impulse, just go with it fearlessly. Take risks, see what happens, you know. There is no other way to live, is there, than to live in this state of humility and surrender to the Master within, I mean, Any other state feels as so much pain, suffering. So rather than detachment, it's surrender. Surrender is the magic word, not detachment. Even if all those gurus have said it, they've said it. They've said what they had to say but the experience also has to be in its solidity for thisness, because this is what is going on on this planet. Otherwise, if you are a, if you are identifying with Supreme Soul, then you can also leave the body and go there and do what you have to do there. Hmm? Some spiritual masters, they they went into states of samadhi and enlightenment states, but these are not states which are terrestrial and corporeal, so they are never here when they are there. They cannot be here, and if they are not here, then they are not with the thisness of this existence in a non-dual experience. So I feel that it's very, it's very real what's happening with you. I can feel it also. Just you have to have that trust that it's, yes, it's good, I'll go, I feel, I move, you know. I just sometimes feel like that the belief or when I'm like involved so much in a story or like in an interaction with someone, then it's like difficult to, um, to really stay there or like to follow like the impulse then even like because yeah it feels like the, the imprint as you sometimes say is like so strong that I don't know how to stay away from this conditioning. Whenever you realize that the ego is trying to take over a situation, the way you know it's happening is if there is fear, if there is anger. These are the main signs. Oh, there's fear, mm, it's the ego. Ah, oh, there's anger, mm, it's the ego. Ah, oh, there's irritation, it's the ego. There is nothing to do about looking at it. It's about surrendering in that moment. Just very quickly, just go into surrender state. Because what that does is it, it immediately removes the attention from the ego. Instead of saying, oh, that is not my anger. The moment you say that, you are already identifying with it. So it's not about, is it my anger, is it someone else's anger, is it God's anger, is it whose anger? You move into the state of surrender in that moment. That is the practice, that is the sadhana. If you say, I can't do it, that means you can't take the practice in that moment, which means you train yourself to practice that in that moment. You know, there are people whose sadhana it is to stand on one leg and keep one arm up in the air. Go to the Kumbha Mela, you'll see sadhus, their practice, their sadhana, their gurus have told them, Ab ek pair pe khade ro, dusre haat upar rakho, aur aise hi khade ro. Stand like this now. Ten years they'll wait like that. Then the guru will come by and say, Haan, how's it going? And then they say, yes, I've been standing for ten years, can you give me some knowledge, Gurudev? She says, yes, but now you stand on the other leg, put the other hand up and then we'll see, I'll come by, soon I'll be back. He doesn't know, will the guru come in ten years, in twenty years or will he die standing with his hand up? That is sadhana, that is tapascharya, that is practice. 
So your sadhana, your practice, your tapascharya, if you take up this practice, is to catch it when the anger comes and not to say, this is not my anger. It's to say, there's anger. Oh, master of the being, I'm your instrument, I'm your instrument. And the anger is gone in that moment. That is the sadhana. That's how you get jathar agni, that's how you build up your shakti. All of you know these words, you build it up like that. Then again it starts, again it rears its head. Again you say, no, surrender. You don't say, this is not me, that is not me, or I am, so that is not me. You don't even have to look at it. You don't have to talk about yourself in connect with the ego, but you move into surrender. So to say, I can't do it, it's like that sadhu standing there says, now I can't stand on one leg, I'm going to put my leg down. Then he has to start the ten-year practice again. Even after six years, if he puts his leg down, he has to start all over again. So it is each moment pulling yourself to this moment and surrendering in that moment. That is the sadhana here. It is the sadhana the practice of surrender to soul, surrender to love, because the soul in its essence is love. It impulses this system to live in love. So if you want to live in love, you have to bend down to the soul and go with it. And that's the, that's the practice lifelong. It's not about now I've reached self-realization, now I'm going to put a halo around my head and float two feet above the ground with diaphanous wings. Self-realization is not like enlightenment. Enlightenment is a before and after. And almost everybody who has enlightenment doesn't want it once they have it. Then they say, now what? And I want to reverse it or I want to come back down into reality. As you know, so many enlightened masters have come to these satsangs and asked, now what to do? I'm in that state, what to do? What to do is take off the moon suit, get back into here and now, into thisness, into reality, into surrender to the soul. Not surrender to the guru, you can surrender to the guru, but that's not where it ends. The guru has to point you to the soul. Where is he pointing you or she? Surrender to what? It doesn't end with the surrender to the Guru, no? It starts with the surrender to the parents, and then they show you the gods, then it's surrender to the gods, then the gods show you the Gurus, then it's surrender to the Gurus, and then the Gurus show you the Antar Guru, which is the final destination. So if you're going and surrendering to a Guru and you haven't found your soul, then there's a problem. And it's not about cosmic soul, it's about individualized, terrestrial, material soul. So that practice will, will deepen, and it'll deepen, and it'll deepen. And the deeper you bend, the deeper it deepens. I am an instrument, I am the instrument. Say, I, Francisca, am the instrument of the master, of the soul then it's more like this experience of this is the instrument and then it's surrender and it's surrender and then it's the experience of instrument, instrument. Just acting from the impulse, karma from the impulse. And at one point there is no identity here that is actually here, but it is doing from the impulse of the soul in surrender, not in identification, and then... So it will take a deepening of practice, yes. But at least you don't have to stand on one leg for ten years. Hmm? Would you like to do that? Sometimes it seems easier. Would be easier, easier yes. yes. <laughs> I, I actually see what you mean. It is sometimes easier. I sometimes think it would be easier to tell people to stand on one leg than to surrender to the soul. But uh, 
I won't be telling you that. I won't be telling you to stand on one leg. I'm telling you stand on both feet, be present, be here and now, tune in to the Master within, observe in this moment, is the ego impulsing this action or is the Truth, the Soul, the Antaratman, the Antar Guru? And then you feel, go with the Antar Guru on both feet, no need to stand only on one. Namaskaram. <laughs> After her you can come.